Hello, and welcome to the 2020 Variety Show. I'm Grace Hall. I am Charlie Smith. And I am Megan Sherry. And we are your 2020 Variety Show directors. Despite the challenges we face due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we, along with our advisors and the entirety of our senior class, have pushed through, adapted, and produced the show you're about to watch. We're so very proud of everyone involved, and we want to thank you for continuing your support despite the change in format. We hope you enjoy the show. A wise man once said, good teachers can affect eternity. We never know where their influence will end. Punxsutawney's history provides a remarkable example of the truth of that statement. Margaret C. Bowles, a former English teacher, set an example of generosity and friendship that is worthy of remembrance. The foundation that today bears her name is an enduring tribute to Ms. Bowles' remarkable accomplishments. Margaret C. Bowles was born in Denver, Colorado. She came to Punxsutawney in 1916 to pursue her career in education. She taught in our school system until her death at the age of 56. Following her death in 1949, many local residents and former students began to tell how Ms. Bowles had secretly helped finance their way through college when funds were low. Ms. Bowles' only stipulation for the loans were that the money be repaid and that no one has to know of her generosity while she was still alive. A short time after Ms. Bowles had passed away, the Teachers Association and local civic leaders met to discuss a way to perpetuate the memories of Ms. Bowles. The Margaret C. Bowles Memorial Scholarship Foundation began collecting funds to be used for loans to worthy students pursuing advanced training after high school. Since the beginning of the Variety Show in 1951, it has been a tradition for each graduating class to contribute a portion of the proceeds from the annual production to the Bowles Foundation. The class of 2020 considers it an honor and a privilege to do our part in keeping the ideals Ms. Bowles represented. This show seamlessly connects the past to the present and highlights the effect of Ms. Bowles' kindness, highlights her ability to change lives and make continued education possible for so many students. With that being said, welcome to the 2020 Virtual Variety Show. For the world we're gonna make One, two, three, go! You stumble through your days Got your head hung low Your sky's a shade of gray like a zombie in a maze You're asleep inside But you can't shake away Cause you're just a dead man walking Thinking that's your only option But you can flick the switch And brighten up your darkest day Sun is up and the color's blinding Take the world and redefine it Leave behind your narrow mind You'll never be the same Come alive
got your head hung low Your sky's a shade of grey Like a zombie in a maze You're asleep inside But you can't shake away Cause you're just a dead man walking Thinking that's your only option But you can flick the switch And brighten up your darkest day Sun is up and the color's blinding Take the world and redefine it Leave behind your narrow mind You'll never be the same Come alive News at Studio 1A in my parents' basement. Let's meet the rest of the news team. This is MC News. Here for your variety show coverage, this is Sam Rogers. Hi, I'm Holly Hartman. Hi, I'm Tegan Ludwig. Ashanti Daymore here, coming to you through MCN. Zoom, an app that recently just started Zooming with popularity. Used for friends, classes, and more. Making it easy, well for most. Ashanti, my friends want to make a call on Zoom and I don't know how to use it. Can you help me? Mom, I'm in the middle of an introduction right now. I'm live. Ugh, sorry, boomers. And now, faculty Zoom fanatics. Coming, Mom! Hey guys, welcome to another weekly faculty meeting, quarantine style. Let's start with some updates. How are we doing with participation and lesson planning? Tell me, how are things going? I just hope this doesn't affect Groundhog Day this year. Oh, um, productivity. I've actually managed to learn the first 1,342 digits of pi over the last couple of days. 3.14159265, you get the point. That's great, Gresky. But what about the students? How are your classes going? How's participation? The kids aren't doing anything. First, I had to cancel their senior research paper, and now they aren't doing any of their work. I mean, on the bright side, I don't have to take away Avon Jameson's phone every other day. But I actually kind of miss doing that, and I really do miss all the kids. Yeah, the kids aren't doing work. 
and I miss them too. I really do. But what are you going to do? They're kids. And most of yours are seniors. They're basically out the door anyway. Now, I haven't had sufficient human interaction in weeks. Who wants to talk about politics? Shankle, no one wants to talk about the election. But I agree with Mrs. Elise. I can't get half my kids to do their work. Fine. No politics. I get it. Touchy subject. How about morals? We could have a good debate about that. Grusky, Hayden, anyone up for a debate? Shankle, I'm trying to explain that my kids aren't learning their trig. Trig. I mean, trig is important. As important as my daily 10 minutes of reading? Mr. Hayden, where are you going? You know what? Whatever. Mr. Keller, how about an update from you? Well, it's very difficult to teach these kids about their mental and emotional health over the internet. Participation has definitely been down. These are hard times, but exercise can help relieve stress. So I've been practicing my calisthenics. Mr. Keller, what was that you said about calisthenics? Calisthenics, as in exercises. Actually, it's about time for me to go do them now. Did Mr. Keller seriously just leave? And Mr. Hayden, what are you eating? Classic Mr. Hayden. Oh, it's just a ham sandwich. Shankle, what do you got over there? I saw you munching on something earlier and it looked tasty. Okay, guys, this isn't the Food Network. Sorry for yelling, guys. I think this quarantine is just taking a toll on everyone. I mean, I miss the kids as much as you guys do. If I could go back, I'd let every one of those students wear Halloween costumes. You know, I really do miss the kids. I do too. Same here. Me too. I think we all do. And Mr. Wong, I bet it's way less fun throwing kids stuff out of their lockers when the halls are empty. Hey, that was one time. Well, before we wrap this up, we haven't heard from Mr. White yet. How's everything transitioning for the AP Bio kids? Oh, um, it's going okay. I think they're fine. I'm just kind of worried about all the sports uniforms. I mean, half of spring sports already had them, and there were some I still hadn't collected from the winter season. Heck, Bella McDivitt still hasn't turned hers in, and volleyball is a fall sport. Hey, guys. Hi, everyone. I miss you all, the kids. Aw, I miss all my kids. Hey, Kaiser. Hey, Lyle. Hey, Lyle. Did you watch the show last night? Could you believe? Mrs. Kaiser, Mrs. Lyle, what are you guys doing here? This is a meeting for teachers. Uh, sorry, Mr. Long, but we heard about the meeting, and we just wanted to say hi to everyone. Yeah, I'm over this quarantine. I might complain about all you guys and those kids, but I'd do just about anything to see you all again. Well, we were just finishing up, but it's nice to see you guys. I have another meeting to get to in a few minutes, so I'm going to have to end this call. But keep up the good work, everyone. Mr. White, don't worry about the uniforms. And Mr. Hayden, maybe next time eat some lunch before this meeting. Yeah, because Mr. Hayden is going to show up without snack. Well, same time next week. Everyone, it was great to see you. No, no. Hey, D, how do you get off this thing? Oh, wait, I found it. Welcome back to MCN News. It's Holly here, and today we're going to be bringing something a little bit different to the news station. There have been many rumors going around that there would be no variety show fudge this year. For the first time in history, I've decided to put a stop to this. I know what you're all thinking, including my own mother. How am I supposed to make all this fudge when I burn my own toast frequently? You have a fair point. Let me go check on it real quick. Oh, no. Um, actually, there's going to be no fudge this year. Um, it looks like we have a little bit of a fire going. Which brings up our next act, which is Ashanti Daymore singing to This Girl is on Fire. She's just a girl and she's on fire.
streets of Punxsutawney. There have been many accusations of road rage in the streets of Punxsutawney. And I know we're all wondering the same thing. Why are so many people mad when they don't have anywhere to go? Well, I'm here to witness it firsthand. Oh my gosh, mom, do you see the death glare those people were giving me? Hey, what was that for? Oh, well, hopefully people in the next skit, Road Rage Olympics, have the patience that I do. Thanks for tuning in to MCN. Hey, I didn't know turn signals were optional. Betty, I think we're still on. Oh. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I'm Carol Baskin Robin, reporting live with WJAC Channel 6 News. Tonight, we offer our viewers a very special event that cannot be missed a look into the treacherous parking lot of Punxsutawney Shop and Save. In the midst of a pandemic, Today, the student drivers of Punxsutawney Area High School have gathered in this very parking lot after the 3 p.m. school dismissal bell rang. As they trudged on for toilet paper and other necessities, they screamed and shouted the scariest of obscenities. Even the sweetest of students were turned into seething psychopaths. And tonight, here on WJAC Channel 6, we finally get to take a closer look and interview the students and staff. Our first guest is Mr. Hawkenberry, a teacher in driving instructor at the school. Mr. Hockenberry, thank you for being with us today. How are you? And thank you for having me, Carol. I'm a big fan of the show. My wife and I watch it every day when we get home from work. Oh, that's so good to hear. Thank you. So let's pounce right in. Can you tell me a little bit about your students and your experience in being a driving instructor? Oh yes, these are very nice kids. In my years teaching safety ed, I have gotten to teach some of the most level-headed, calmest drivers. Kids at this age can be very aggressive drivers, but not our students. That's amazing, Mr. Hockenberry. Thank you again for being with us. And thank you. Our next guests are Tiffany B. and Tiffany M., the school's most idle beauty queens. 
I'm okay, Carol. Thank you. I'm fine. I'm just... <laughs> so, girls, uh, tell me about what transpired in the parking lot today. Well, Carol, <laughs> right after going shopping, we were supposed to go to one last nail appointment before everything got put on lockdown, but because some people in our town just don't know how to drive, like, is it that hard to just... <laughs> Oh my gosh, Tiffany, stop crying. <laughs> it's just that because I got stuck in the stupid parking lot, I missed my nail appointment. And now I have these total ugly nails. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry for the situation that you're in. Now back to Tiffany B. Tell us more about the parking lot, please. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. As I was saying, <laughs> oh my gosh, Tiffany, no wonder Kyle dumped you. Sometimes I wish you weren't my best friend. <laughs> okay. Our next guests are one of PAHS's beloved Boots brothers, Billy, and everybody's favorite buckle bunny, Marcy Joe. Welcome, guys, and thanks for being here. Howdy, Carol. You're looking mighty fine today, sweet cheeks. Oh, well, that's Billy. Now, please tell us what you saw today in the parking lot. Well, we're on our way to rip some lips. Yee, 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 yee. <sighs> well, we needed them masks. Then these little city slickers came around and almost hit my truck. Poor old Bessie. Bessie. Bessie's a truck. Ah, uh, Bessie. No, oh, oh. Yeah, she's the love of my life. Them rubber neck of me, his Danny and Nate. I ain't ever seen son of them. Speaking of Danny and Nate, we asked them to log on with us today as well. Our next guests are Nanny and Dave, the school star athletes. Nate, Danny, thank you for being here with us today. Now, we all know that there are two sides to every story. Please tell us yours. Well, you see, Carol, Nate and I were on our way to a pickup game after school, but we stopped for hand sanitizer first, and that hick in his rust bucket. You got a whole lot of nerve, don't you? You got something to say, bro? Now you listen here, you little gym rat. Don't you talk about good old Bessie like that. You see, I got these fancy new mirrors here. They just, boom, just turn real fast. If you don't shut that yapper, I won't hesitate to mess your owner face in. Moron. I'd like to see you try. Yeah. It, it, door doesn't open anymore. I come over there and get you, though. Don't you worry. I come over there and get you. And there you have it. Thank you for tuning in with us at WJAC Channel 6 News to take a closer look at the bizarre and heated phenomenon that transpired at Shop and Save today. This might be the most intense story that I've been asked to guest report on since the Variety Show Fudge famine of 2014. I'm Carol Baskin-Robin, and this is... Well, it appears that we have one more witness. His name is reportedly Gilt, her husband, and he will give us one more perspective. Welcome, Gil. Why do you want to bite me? Yeah, that's right, Carol Baskin-Robin. You're looking at Orange Julius Exotic. You're crazy. You have to do everything you can for attention. Don't you? Now, you listen here. Now, with all this social distancing and stuff going on, everyone, all they want to talk about is you and the coronavirus. But what I'm here to talk about is your husband being under the septic tank. I have nothing to say to you. Nothing. Now, you got to listen to me here. You can't cut me off this time. Now, I, I've had a lot of husbands in my life, but none of them have been getting snacked on by tigers and sitting under septic tank. Two people were allegedly seen shoplifting the following items from the local supermarket. Face wash, chapstick, and a kayak. Witnesses claim that they fled the scene on a tandem bicycle. Police sketches have now been distributed to help us get closer to stopping them. If you have seen either of these people in the last week, please send a report to the police of when and where you saw them.
Together we can stop these savage criminals. On a lighter note, let's take a look at something that has swept the internet. Life hacks. But they say that these aren't your typical life hacks. They are actually survival hacks? I don't know. Let's go ahead and roll some of those clips that they gave us. So if you've been out hiking for a long day and you need to find a spot to lay down and get some rest, you can use my favorite survival hack, the Michael Scott Pants Tent. So you want to get in your bag, pull out your pants, find a log like so, you just want to lay down and tent your pants. Make yourself sort of a pants tent like that. And you'll stay a lot safer in the hot sun. So if you've been outside lately, you might have felt like you lived in Canada. Well, as we get up here into the blister in 50s, you might feel like you're losing touch with your Canadian side, eh? Well, with this Canadian life hack, you'll be out for a rip in no time. So you want to take your canned air and really cool things down outside. So you start spraying in the air and you spray on the ground right where you want to go ripping and you should have her done in no time. If you have your Canadian friends, you can get them out here too, you know? Really speed things up, eh? Well, I got my buddy out here. I wanted to show you all my latest invention. This here redneck survival hack will keep you safe from any intruders. With this trip wire going across, you try to go through that door and that bat will come down clean, knocked out. Just look at that beauty. It took me a whole two days to set that up. Well, alright, buddy. We'll see you around. Thanks for coming out and filming for me, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, geez. Those are some interesting individuals, but if you ever find yourself trekking into the unknown, well, one of those hacks might just save your life. Now up next is Charlie Smith singing Into the Unknown. I can hear you, but I won't. Some look for trouble, while others don't. There's a thousand reasons I should go about my day and ignore your whispers, which I wish will go away. Oh. Just a ring in my ear, and if I heard you, which I don't, I'm spoken for, how do you hear? Everyone I've ever loved is here with these walls. I'm sorry, secret siren, but I'm looking out your calls. I've had my adventure, I don't need something new. I'm afraid of what I'm risking if I followed you into the unknown.
network has seen an increase over complaints for volunteer firefighters. Complaints have ranged from blue lights and noisy pagers. The super accurate graph made by Penn State researchers shows the frustrations experienced by people. Volunteer firefighters responded by saying, just join us and the pagers won't bother you anymore and you'll love your blue light. Well, we can now go to dispatch days to take a look at the volunteer firefighters. Honestly, guys, it's been pretty quiet around here since these new COVID-19 protocols came out. Yeah, the car rate is low right now. Well, here we go again. This is what happens when you say the keyword, Braylon. It's all your fault. There's been a bicycle accident. Excuse me, sir. I can't understand you. Calm down and tell me what's going on. It is on car here. Okay, sir, we're going to send you some help. Jefferson County, alerting box 8C, fire alarm. Hello, 911 emergency services. He's working on the roof and he fell. He ain't moving. What's going on? I need an ambulance. Sir, slow down so that I can understand you. I'm laying there, he ain't moving, I ain't ambulance. This boy needs a hospital. What are you guys doing? Hurry up! Okay, we got you. Jefferson County, alerting box 4IJ, entrapment in an elevator. <laughs> 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> There's a splinter in my foot. Can you repeat that, sir? Are you having some trouble over there today? I just can't understand any of these people. Sir, sir, calm down. Okay. Jefferson County alerting box 16B, working structure fire. Where do you think it is, John? It said box 8C fire alarm should be somewhere on this street. Oh man, some kid fell off his bike. I hope he's okay. Hi, I'm here for the elevator rescue. Dude, this is a one-story house. What? It's a one-story house, no! bro. No! Get in the truck, Brandon! <laughs> All right. I think that's the wrong address. There's no fire at all. The house is gonna be on the ground by then. You know, we really should be wearing our mask. I mean, people are that. MCN News, the only trustworthy channel with trustworthy news. Ashanti here. 2020 started with concerns of World War III, Australia being on fire, the stock market crash, coronavirus, and more. This year has definitely been something, but there is hope to make this the happiest year of all. And now, Bria Heckler and Kyler Beringer dancing to the happiest year. I'm really on the ropes this time I've been fighting all my life for you I never should have said goodbye But maybe that's what stupid 
stupid people do Cause you gave me peace And I wasted it I'm here to admit That you were my medicine Oh, I couldn't quit And I'm down on my knees again Asking For nothing Thank you for the happiest year of my life Thank you for the happiest year of my life think I could forgive myself I'm sorry for the ways that I used you And I could care less right now But you know you hurt me pretty good too Yeah, we made each other bleed And we tasted it I'm here to admit that you were my medicine Oh love, I couldn't quit And I'm down on my knees again Thank you for the happiest year of my life Oh, thank you for the happiest year of my life So, wake me up when they build that time machine I wanna go back Wake me up when you were sleeping next to me Cause I really loved you Ooh Thank you for the happiest year of my life Thank you for the happiest year of my life Oh, thank you for the happiest year of my life Yeah Thank you for the happiest year of my life Thank you for the happiest year of my life Welcome back to MCN, your favorite news channel with your favorite MCs. Before quarantine hit and we were forced to leave school for the rest of the year, not everyone had ideal grades. 99% of students enrolled in the academic curriculum said that they have at least one B in a class. One student, who chose to remain anonymous, spoke with us and said, I know that if I had just a little bit more time, I could have gotten it up to an A. All I needed was a few more days and I would have been fine. Now my GPA is ruined thanks to quarantine. This time has been a struggle for all students, and our hearts go out to every single one of you suffering with unideal grades. MCN will be back after our next skit, Academics Anonymous. How are you guys doing? I'm bored out of my mind. I've read every single book in my house. I've even read some of them twice. You could order more. Yeah, but I'm spending $50,000 in tuition next year to Vinci. I don't think I want to spend any more than I need to. You're going to Princeton, Shakespeare, the cheapest Ivy. Just be glad you're not going to Columbia. My tuition's going to be almost $60,000. Clearly, you didn't do the math, Washington. Harvard will be much cheaper. By what noon? $10,000? It's all expensive. Every single college I got accepted into is going to bleed me dry anyways. It gets on my nerves. It's because it wasn't always like that. Did you know when Warren Buff went to Columbia, the tuition was almost $1,690. That's almost $17,000 today, accounting for inflation. Okay, I guess you did do the math. It's just full history. I'm majoring in history, after all. Hey, wait, Curie, why is your video off? 
Oh, sorry guys. I was cleaning up an experiment and I didn't want you guys to see the mess. Why is it so dusty where you are? I'm in my garage. I was in my bedroom working on one of my preliminary ideas for the possible COVID-19 cure. And I accidentally set my bed on fire. I mean, the house is okay, but I figured I should do my experiments here so I don't burn it down next time. I would have loved to seen that. I've never seen such a big fire. I mean, I have, if you count the photos of the Triangle Shirt Waste Factory fire, because I looked at all those a lot since the fire was so important to history, but... Spare us the details, please. I'm sure A-Push readers would love to hear your essay, but we don't. Plus, you're distracting me. I'm studying for a much harder AP test. What, the calc test? That one everyone gets a five on? Huh? Try AP English, Newton. Do you want to write a full essay in 45 minutes? I don't know. Two four-part questions sounds much harder to me. Do you guys need to argue about this all the time? Yeah, guys, this is so stupid. Thank you, Kiri. I mean, AP Chem is by far the hardest AP test. You guys have no idea what you're talking about. Have you guys ever considered that maybe this stuff doesn't matter as much as you think it does? What, what are you talking about? Of course it matters. If I get a five on this test, I'll get college credit, save money next year. Mathematically, it's the only reasonable option. And if I tank this test, Princeton is going to rescind my application. Then I'll have to go to one of my safety schools. You apply to safety schools? This is exactly the kind of stuff I'm talking about, guys. This obsession with academics is so unhealthy. We're second semester seniors. And with this whole pandemic, school is basically over. You have time to relax. Why can't we talk about something other than school? Like I'm working on a sculpture right now and I kind of wanted to show. Oh, we can talk about the cure I'm working on. I'm using a form of hydroxychloroquine and running some tests on. I mean, talk about something normal. I guess it doesn't have to be the sculpture, like TV or sports, or just how you're feeling right now, anything. Like, is there anything you guys are hoping to do once quarantine is over? Well, I hope I don't have to do classes online in the fall. Like, I don't even know how I'm gonna be able to do any work online. Yeah, like, how am I going to work in a lab from home? I mean, I have my home lab and everything, but it's not nearly as well equipped as Princeton's labs. Have you tried doing math online? It's torture, I tell you, torture. Okay, that's enough. I was hoping we could have a normal conversation, but obviously that isn't going to work. I didn't want to have to do this, but come on, guys. Talking normally isn't working. They need help. How's it going? Mrs. Fluffy. Da Vinci, what's the guidance counselor doing here? This is an intervention, guys. Did they hack in here? Only I would have been able to do something like that. I'm kind of impressed, actually. No, Da Vinci gave us the code. Da Vinci. Don't get angry at him, Mr. Newton. He had a very good reason to invite us. Consider this a formal meeting of Academic Anonymous. <laughs> nice one. What reason? We don't need AA, Mrs. Fluffy. It's nice to see you again. Same with the rest of you guys. This is a private conversation. Please leave. Who's the host? Kick them out. I'm the host, and I'm not doing that. We have to have a serious talk about you guys and your obsession with grades. Not like you're not obsessed with your grades. You're going to Dartmouth for crying out loud. Da Vinci? You are, right? No, actually, I'm going to Penn State. Penn State? Zounds, man, you're wasting your potential. Why on earth did you pick Penn State over Dartmouth? It's much cheaper, and they actually have a better art program. Doubt that. This is exactly why I'm here. Mr. Shakespeare, you should be happy for your friend, no matter where he's going. He's your friend, after all. I don't know if I could be friends with an idiot. I mean, how stupid do you have to be? Dude, what's your problem with Penn State? I'm going there too. Are you not my friend either? When did I say we were friends? Don't listen to them, Shakespeare. You can't trust any of them. Did you know Mrs. Fluffy went to Cornell? I hardly think my college education has anything to do with this, you two. Besides, Cornell is an Ivy League university, just like Harvard and Princeton. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that.
just listen to me for one second. My job is to make sure you kids succeed when you enter the real world. And I don't think any Ivy League education will help you succeed if you have such an elitist attitude. I'm trying to give you good advice. Exactly. Relax. It's okay sometimes, guys. Life isn't a test. You don't have to be perfect all the time. Any good work of art is preceded by countless mistakes. You have a point. Einstein failed a thousand times before he perfected the light bulb. Yeah, exactly. You see, we all want to do well in life, and some of the people we look up to as the world's greatest achievers have failed many times. So you can too. But, but I've never gotten below an A. My parents would kill me. Mine too. It would look like the Boston Massacre, or a wounded knee, a better metaphor. <laughs> what are either of those? Okay, I got a B in English last year, and I'm still alive. If you got an internship with NASA that same year, I don't think your parents really cared about the B after that. You got an internship with NASA? Why didn't you tell me? Um, obviously, I didn't want you to get it, duh. Oh, so that just makes my internship with the bank look stupid. That makes mine with the center look stupid. What the heck, Curry? Stop. Just stop. You don't need to fight over this. You're all in college already anyway. Why do you care who's done what? And how many internships have you done? None, but... That's what I thought. And I thought I was making progress. Clearly, I was wrong. Please, just listen. It doesn't matter what internships you've got. It doesn't matter what grades you've gotten. And it doesn't even really matter where you're going to college. You're all going to great schools with bright futures ahead of you. And I'd hate to see any of you squander that by acting like you're superior to everybody. That won't get you anywhere. You know, Mrs. Fluffy, I think you're right. I'm going to keep looking for the cure, but if I don't find it, I mean, oh well, I'll still have chances to make a name for myself in the future. And maybe I am going a little crazy at the reading. Like, I haven't seen my parents in like a week. I barely left my room. Sorry I made fun of you going to Cornell, Mrs. Fluffy. That was wrong of me. Yeah, and sorry for getting after you about the internship, Carrie. I think you guys are finally getting it. So, do you think you guys can chill out after the AP test then? Oh my god, I completely forgot about the AP test for a second. I have like 20 practice problems I still need to do today. Gotta go. Oh, I've only gone up to the progressive era. I've only, I'm never going to be ready for the test in time. I still have two world wars to cover. I spent all this time reading and none of this time writing. Oh my gosh, I, I forgot to practice any of the math. Mr. Da Vinci. Don't you have any APs to study for? Yeah, AP art history, but I already studied today. The global pandemic has caused many to not even know what day it is. There's no Sunday church anymore. The only reminder that students have anymore is that there's assignments due, but most of us don't actually know. So here is Emmett's skit yesterday. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging. Oh, yesterday, if suddenly, why she had to go, I don't know, she wouldn't say, I said something wrong, now I long for yesterday, yesterday. Love was such an easy game to play Now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe in yesterday Why she had to go I don't know, she wouldn't say 
Love was such an easy game to play And I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe in yesterday With everyone being home 24-7, tensions are rising in households. Feuds are breaking out left and right. A majority of families aren't used to being together for this many consecutive days. Quarantine has lowered many people's tempers during this time. It has also shown that- Hayden, get out of the shot! I told you to stay out of here! <sighs> Without further ado, here is Generational Family Feud. Welcome everyone to today's episode of Boomer vs. Youth. I'm your beautiful host, Bo Handsome. Every day at 12 noon, you tune in to see the finest entertainment on television. And also me. Well, quarantine isn't stopping us. Today we are once again pitting the youngsters against the old timers. The digital natives against the digital immigrants. You know the drill. One point for every correctly answered question. If your team fails to supply an answer, the opposing team has the opportunity to steal. Gen Z kids, you will get questions pertaining to areas of boomer expertise and vice versa. Now, let's introduce today's contestants, starting with the Boomers. Uh, let's start with Susan. Susan, are you all gone? Um, Susan. I Bobby Michael, Michael, mommy is on a game show. This is what happens whenever you introduce Boomers to the internet. Hi, I'm Susan. And I can tell you now, I don't know how any of this works. Susan, you can back up from the camera a bit. <laughs> okay, Linda. Um, Linda. No, there's really no need to wear a mask. You're not actually in contact with these people. Hi, kids. Look, I'm on TV. Say hi to Pickles. That's lovely, Linda. Moving on. Uh, Roger? The name's Roger. I came here to win. I'm a retired teacher, so I've seen some things. So if you want to know about World War II, I'm your man. Oh, were you a history teacher? Uh, no, son. I was coach. Oh, okay. Karen? Hello. Excuse me, but I don't seem to notice a manager around here. That's a significant problem if I'm going to be comfortable. Well, Karen, you're sitting in your own living room, so. All right, boomers. Pleasure to have you. Moving on to Gen Z. Hi, I'm Maddie with a Y. You can call me D though, because Maddie is so mainstream. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok. Here, I'll write it down for you. Did you say TikTok? Linda, Karen, TikTok? Um, Susan, I'm not sure you understand how Zoom calls work. Okay, well, I'm Maddie as well, as if it really matters. As I speak, thousands of trees are being cut down to fuel a society driven by greed and hatred. And lust for money has shoved plastic down the gullets of almost every seaboard known to man. It's a real problem. I don't think we're allowed to air that. We're all going to die. Drown in the waste we created without regard for our fellow living things. Do you like my scrunchies? Uh, uh, yeah, very nice, Maddie. Uh, let's move on. Hey, I'm Addison, varsity cheerleader, homecoming queen, and professional stalker of Shawn Mendes. Oh, Bo, do you think I get your Snapchat? Just a streak, I promise. Show Addison. And on to our final Gen Z contestant, Aiden. Hey. Okay, I think that's enough introduction. Let's get down to business. We will start with our millennial question face-off to start things off. Give me Roger and give me Aiden. Uh, well, we would usually have you guys come down to the stage, but you know, good old Rona. So I'm going to play a clip from a song that was popular in the Millennials' Prime. When you think you know the answer, shout it out. This applies only to Aiden and Roger. First one to answer correctly wins the right to pass or play for your team. Play the song, Mike. Oh, 
since neither of you uncultured swines know the answer, you may each have a few seconds to talk with your teammates. You may use the group chat we provided you all with. It's not my fault no one listens to good music anymore. The Doors. Now they made real, real music. Sorry, guys. Not to worry. We know the answer. It's by that band. You know, the one Beyonce was in before she was Beyonce? What was it called? Say My Name by Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child, Maddie. That's the name. And you call yourself a fan of Queen B. Very good. Addison, would you guys like to play or pass? We'll play Bo. Okay, the first question goes to Gen Z. Maddie, what was the name of the popular neighborhood game that required an empty can? Um, oh, maybe um, it's... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry for the confusion. Maddie with the Y. The question was for you. Again, what was a popular neighborhood game that required an empty can? <sighs> Maddie with a Y. Apparently, that's all I'll ever be. Just another Maddie. The, the question, Maddie. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Um, a can, as in like a can of soda? Bo, how much time do I have to answer this? I don't do well under pressure, and this is giving me anxiety. Okay, a can. Just an empty can. How could you possibly play a game with nothing more than a can? Oh, can jam? I know some of my friends played at parties and barbecues. Is the answer can jam? Calm down, Patty. Take a breath. And I'm sorry that your answer is incorrect. Boomers, do you have a chance to steal? It's kick the can, dang it. I played that game every day out in the street near my house with a couple of buddies. My he used to have to pull me in by the ear just to come in for supper. Kids these days just sit inside with their elections. I tell you, it's a disgrace. Okay, Roger, thank you. Kick the can was the correct answer. That's one point for the boomers. The next question is for students. What does the acronym LOL stand for? LOL? LOL? These kids and their texting and shortened versions of everything. I know that there was a time when words had meanings, and I don't think they understand that. I'll tell you, I don't think they do. They're so lazy nowadays. When I was growing up, I didn't have the option of being lazy. Let me guess. You walked to school, rain or shine, and it was uphill both ways. And respect. That's something you could stand to learn, young man. Okay. Uh, how about we get back to the question? We were wondering what the meaning of LOL was. How am I supposed to know? What's that, Pickles? Oh, you're right. The granddaughter sent me that all the time. Bo, is there any way we can get this cat out of here? She's been whispering to it the whole time, and I can't stand it. I couldn't agree more. Perhaps there's a manager I could speak to about this. My son and I are allergic to cats, and if I get a rash or if he gets a rash, I won't hesitate to sue. Karen, I'm sure there will be no need to take legal action. And besides, this is a video conference. I'm not sure you understand how this works. The cat is not actually next to you right now. Linda, maybe you could take Pickles? What's that, Pickles? Oh, it's okay. They just don't understand. Oh, the question? Pickles just reminded me my granddaughter sent me LOL all the time. I think it means lots of love. They're such sweet girls. Sorry, Linda, but considering it wasn't your turn and the answer is incorrect, we're going to have to give the Gen Z group a chance to steal. Surprise, surprise, the talking cat didn't give you the right answer. Okay, kids, what does... Laugh out loud, Bo. It's laugh out loud. We'd like an actually difficult question, please, and thank you. That's right, Addison. That brings us uh, to a one-to-one -one tie. This one is a team question. Again, for the boomers, what is the term for the global phenomenon in which the Earth's temperature is rising due to the greenhouse effect and a depleting ozone layer? Michael! I will take your iPad away! Don't make me count to three! Okay, I'm going to assume that the silence, uh, other than Karen, has that has taken over the boomer side for the first time means it's safe to turn it over to the Gen Z. It's global warming or climate change, whatever you want to call it. It's happening. And the fact that none of you knew the answer, that the fact that our world is dying and you all just don't seem to care, this is absolutely ridiculous. Well, hold on a minute. You can't just ask us a question that about some made-up idea. Made up? You think this is made up? 
Is this what the Facebook and Snap Face program is teaching you? I'm going to have to ask that we move on to the next question now, ladies and gentlemen. This is daytime television after all. Now, the score is two to one in favor of Gen Z. Boomers, your only chance is to win, is to seal if the young and go to answer. Gen Z, what is the name of the most iconic music? Coachella. Coach what? I uh, think you're pronouncing Woodstock wrong. Um, okay, Boomer, but did Ariana Grande perform at Woodstock? Your hippie music festival doesn't even compare to Woodstock. Thanks for watching Boomer vs. the Youth. Make sure to tune in next week to watch our celebrity edition where Jojo Siwa, Kylie Jenner, Rosie O'Donnell, George Clooney, and many more of your favorite celebrities will face off COVID-19 style. You are so rude. You think you can just mute me? Oh, I will put this all over Facebook. Where is your manager? Thank you to the administration for allowing us to go on with this year's variety show. Without them, none of this could have been possible. Thank you to Patty Polera, who was there for us from the beginning. Thank you for offering help in any way you could and for always having our backs. Thank you to Mrs. Laney and Mrs. Young, as well as the rest of the program committee, for making such a great compilation of sponsors and well wishes. I would like to take this time to recognize the contribution and efforts from the Sproles to the 2020 Variety Show t-shirts, which turned out phenomenal. Thanks again to the Sproles. Thank you to all the parents for allowing their seniors to participate in the virtual Variety Show and for encouraging us through it all. Thank you to the community for all the love and support you've given us throughout everything and offering help to give us back all the things that we've missed out on this year. Without your persistent motivation, this show may have never happened. Thanks to the senior class for having the passion and determination needed to continue with this show and for all the memories we've made over the years. And thank you to our wonderful advisors, Alicia Weaver and Heather Good, who looked to the bumpy road ahead of us and said, let's go for it. Thank you for growing and adapting with us. Without your leadership, dedication, and hearts of gold, this show would not have been possible. Thank you for making a few of our million dreams come true. Say it. 
that can say we've lost our minds See, I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy Run away to a world that we desire Same. Come on. 